All right, well, we've, uh, we've uh, defined an identity, and then we've looked at a few of the basic trig ones, including the Pythagorean ones. So what are we going to do with them? Well, we're basically going to be doing a lot of algebra with them. Um, and the first way we're going to use them is we're going to simplify trig expressions to make them look, well, simpler than what they, than what they look here. So, I mean, to give you a taste of basically the, what we're doing, right? there's no equation here, right? We're, we're just going to have to change the way this looks um, by, by making appropriate substitutions. So, for instance, like in, in algebra, you would do something like 2 times 3 squared plus 4. And then the instructions were to simplify. You'd say, well, okay, so 3 squared is 9. So wherever I see a 3 squared, I can substitute a 9. And since 9 plus 4 is 13, I can substitute a 13 wherever I see a, a 9 plus 4. And 2 times 13 is 26. Right? And so you know what the answer looks like. It's just a number. Now, the, I think that the theme of all this is this one word, substitution. Right? Notice that you know, there's, a way that, there's a way to think about this without using that word substitution. But notice that like, I substituted thing equals for equals. Like 3 squared is 9. And I basically, from here to here, I substituted 3 squared with 9. And then 9 plus 4 was sort of the next substitution, because that's equal to 13. And then I substituted 2 times 13 with a 26. So substitution is sort of a key theme of this whole process. So we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to be using trig expressions, not numerical ones. So here's the first one. We have cosine of x times tangent of x, and I want this to look sim simpler. Well, um, one thing I can do is I'm going to write cosine of x, and I'm going to substitute in an identity for tangent of x. If you look back uh, on your notes, you'll see that tangent of x is sine of x divided by cosine of x. And this is kind of useful because cosine of x is really, I can view it as like cosine of x divided by 1. And now the cosine, I mean this is multiplication of fractions, the cosine divided by cosine will give you a 1 and my final answer is just sine of x over 1. Okay, so we we simplified this to be this. So so cosine of x times tangent of x, all along, it, it, we were just looking at the function sine of x. Right? It just didn't look like it because it was, you know, it was uh, it looked it was expressed as a product instead of just a single function. But if you if you graph this, you'll you'll look at the sine. You'll be looking at the sine function. Let's try the next example. I've got one minus sine squared divided by cosine of x. And so my, what I think is, okay, is there, is there any substitution? Is there anything I can substitute or anything that looks familiar here that we've come across before that I can substitute in? Um, well, if you look to the last video, we actually have that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So I can substitute in a cosine squared for one, whenever I see a 1 minus sine squared. So this reduces to cosine squared of x. And again, remember cosine squared of x means, remember that just means uh, cosine of x. Right? I know the notation is a little confusing, but it's, it means cosine of x times cosine of x. That's what that means. And I'm dividing by cosine of x. And as before, cosine of x divided by cosine of x is a 1, and so my answer is cosine of x. Okay, so hopefully you're, you're sort of getting the idea here. We want to make this complicated trig expression look, you know, look much simpler. Using, using all the uh, trig identity substitutions that are allowed, right? Um, and like, you know, basic laws of algebra, like dividing equals gives you a 1. But again, this graph is just, co and if you graph this in your calculator, you'd be looking at the cosine graph. That's what it's equal to. How about this one here? I've got sine squared plus tangent squared plus cosine squared equals secant. I mean, divided by secant. So, hmm, is there any substitutions I can make? Well, one thing you should notice is there's sine, there's sine squareds, there's cosine squares, there's tangent squares in there. And we, we came up with some 
trig identity, uh, Pythagorean identities involving them. So let's go take a look and see what we got. I got sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That's a nice substitution. Whenever that comes up, substituting 1 in for that is useful. I've got a tangent squared here. So let's see what we can do. Um, I think, I mean, I'm going to add this sine squared with that, so that cosine squared. If I put those together, right, what, those added together just give me a 1, right? So that's just a 1. So my top is now just 1 plus tangent squared. Okay, so that's that's a little simpler than this. And I think we can do even more, right? 1 plus tangent squared, I believe, is equal to, so one, tangent squared plus 1 is the same as 1 plus tangent squared. That's equal to secant squared. So I can substitute in secant squared for the numerator. That's just secant squared. And so this reduces to, sec, so this equals secant squared divided by secant. And, again, secant squared is secant times secant, so one of them divides, and I'm just left with secant of x. So hopefully this, has, this will give you sort of a sense of the flavor of how these should go. Okay, You start with a, a complicated trig expression, and your goal is to use the identities you know to make it, to turn it into one that looks much simpler. We'll do a one last example, and then I'll have you try some of your own. So I've got cosine of x times this quantity, cotangent of x plus tangent of x. So what can we do? Well, before I make any substitutions, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do what this problem is kind of calling out for me to do, which is to sort of distribute this. So this gives me cosine of x times cotangent of x plus cosine of x times tangent of x. All right, so now what? Well, here's a little, a little advice for, from me. It's often useful to use identities and make substitutions that involve sine and cosine. So I want to write use identities to change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. Now this is just like a, a rule of thumb. Right, rot here. That doesn't I mean it doesn't mean it's always the right thing to do, but it, it, it like increases the probability of things working out because I've got a cosine here, and if I can write you know, if I can write the cotangent and the tangent in terms of sine and cosine, then it impre it increases the likelihood that I'm going to have things like this show up, like sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That'll show up more often. And also, I've got a cosine here, so it might divide with some things, or this cosine might divide with something over here. Okay, so that's really useful. So that's what I'm going to do. So I got cosine of x. I'm going to write this now as cosine of x, and I'm going to use the identity I know for cotangent, which is cosine divided by sine plus cosine of x. And I'm going to write tangent of x as sine divided by cosine. So I'm using that identity. Like I said, I'm using the ones that turn into sine and cosines. Okay, so this isn't really much simpler anymore yet. I haven't done much. But let's just keep going. Cosine over 1 times cosine over sine. Multiply the numerators, you get well, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And 1 times sine of x is just sine of x. Plus, and here I've got uh, cosine of x over 1 times cosine of x over cosine, and I think this, this can divide to give me sine of x 
over 1. And so now it's like, well, what do I do? Well, let's just think for a minute. I've got, I'm adding two fractions. One way to make things, uh, make it look like not so, uh, not so complicated, or at least like as one fraction, is add these fractions. But in order to do that, I need a common denominator. And the common denominator is sine of x. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this by sine of x. So then this becomes cosine squared over sine of x plus sine times sine is sine squared divided by 1 times sine of x is sine of x. And now they have the same, right, these fractions now have the same denominator, so I can write it as all over one fraction, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x divided by sine of x. And again, this is useful because the top, right, this is what I meant by turning things into sine and cosines. The top is just, if you look at your identities page, that's just the number one. So this is equal to 1 over sine of x, which is, and 1 over sine of x is just cosine of x. Ah, nope, it's not, Mr. Ferrillo. 1 over sine of x is cosecant of x. So all along, this whole mess is just equal to cosecant of x. Okay, so I left a couple for you to just try on your own, very simple. Um, and I want you to, what I want you to think about when you're doing these is, A, every step is justified with a, a substitution or, or an identity substitution or you know like in this case you just use some algebra get get a common denominator and I can see like I can see how this evolves into this final answer students that are often they often put too little down so I can't really tell what they did here notice I do every step along the way to show that this reduces to the cosecant of x